Hello, my name is Ruben Vervake, and I will be showing you the 7-step relational model mapping algorithm for the conceptual modeling and design methods course. Now, why do we need such a mapping algorithm? We start from an original ORM schema, and we want to transform this schema to a relational database schema. We can use this algorithm for this purpose. Now, all the data and constraints modeled in the original ORM schema will also be implemented in some way in the relational database schema. In other words, the transformation is lossless. I say in some way because we will see that not all constraints that are possible in ORM schema will be supported by relational database schemas. This is the seventh step algorithm. The first step is to verify the relational model reference completeness of the original ORM schema. Second step is to group around non-subtype entities in the schema. The third step is to group around the subtype entities. As fourth step, we are going to map all the many-to-many -many fact types into the relational database schema. The fifth step will ensure that everything will be lexical. Sixth step is to eliminate all the obsolete reference tables that will occur. And as last step, we will map all the remaining constraints into the relational database schema. So the first step is to verify the relational model reference completeness of the ORM schema. First of all, there is a problem. In a relational database schema, we cannot refer to non-lexical instances. So we need a way to enforce that every non-lexical instance is identifiable with a unique lexical instance. Let's elaborate on that problem a little bit more in detail. So first of all, we have a license registration and in the relational schema, this will be mapped to an attribute in a table. In this case, the table car. The second example is a date that could be mapped to an attribute in a table of the relational schema. Both are lexical object types, but we, when we have a non-lexical object type, for example, person, this would be mapped to a table itself in a relational schema. Now let's check if we can refer to all those object types. For example, the license registration, we can refer to this value by means of a foreign key, because it's an attribute. The same applies for the registered on date. We can map the reference to a foreign key in the relational schema. But for a person, in this case, a table in a relational schema, we don't have a way to refer to that table on its own. This is simply not possible. So we need to find a way to make every object type relational model referable. This is defined on the type level of the object type. This way, every instance of the object type will be referable in the same way because it's an instance of that type. This reference is identifying by the uniqueness constraint in the schema together with the insurance that every such reference will exist. In other words, every such reference is mandatory. Now there are four aspects to check whether or not an object type is relational model referable. The first one is when the object type is a lexical object type. We have seen that we can refer to these because they will be mapped to attributes in a relational schema. So when they are lexical, they are automatically relational model referable. Secondly, is when the object type has a unique simple reference and the object type that is referenced is also relational model referable. When there is a fact type and both roles are identifying where one role is mandatory, this is a unique simple reference. The third one is when an object type has a unique composite reference and all its referenced object types are also relational model referable. In this case, for example, project task is relational model referable because its composition of simultaneously identifying fact types, projects and employee are also relational model referable. Now the last is when the object is a subtype of a relational model referable object type. So when is our schema reference complete? 
if every object type in the schema is relational model referable. The second step in our algorithm is to group around non-subtype entities. For each object type A, which is not a subtype, create a table with name A. Then for each object type B that is connected to A via an identifying row A, R1, R2, B, and not yet marked as grouped, prioritized by total row, do the following. Add a column to A with name B, R2, Mark the fact type as grouped. Mark that column as candidate key if the role R2 is identifying. Mark the column with a horizontal bar if B is a non-lexical object type. Mark the column with parentheses if the role R1 is not total or mandatory. Then lastly, mark the object type coral combinations that identify A uniquely. Let's start with an example. This is an ORM schema that we will convert to a relational database schema. Let's start with ID number. Mark it as grouped and create a table with name ID number. This object type has one fact type linked to it, to person, but it's not mandatory on the side of ID number, so we don't take into account this fact type. Furthermore, ID number that doesn't have any fact types left linked to it so we are done for this table. Now let's create a table for person. Mark person as grouped and it has two fact types linked to it. First is ID number and it's an identifying mandatory role so we need to add a column to this table for ID number. ID number is also identifying on the side of ID numbers so we need to mark it as candidate key. It's a lexical object type so no need for a horizontal bar and no need for parentheses because it's a mandatory role. Next is car, but it's not identifying on the side of person, so we don't add this column to the table. Now let's create a table for car. Car has three fact types linked to it. One is VIN, which is a non-lexical object type, and it's identifying on the side of VIN, so this will be marked as a candidate key. It's also mandatory, so no need for parentheses and no need for a horizontal bar because it's a lexical object type. The next is person of. Person is a non-lexical object type, so we need to mark this with a horizontal bar. It's not identifying on the side of person, so no need for a candidate key. And it's an optional role, so we need to put parentheses. The last fact type that is identifying is license registration. It's not identifying on the side of license registration, so no candidate key. It's a lexical object type, so no need for a horizontal bar. And it's an optional role, so we need to put parentheses also. Next, we have license registration, so we need to add a table for this. And all the fact types are already marked, so there are no possible columns anymore for this table. The same applies for VIN. Just add a table with name VIN without any columns. Now we will apply the same logic as in the previous step, but for subtype entities. We will add an extra identifying non-lexical column to these tables that refer to their direct supertype. Our schema contains one subtype, coupé, so we create a table for coupé. This object type doesn't have any fact types linked to it, so no columns are created. We do have to create a column for its super type though. We call it car subsuming and mark it as candidate key since coupé is relational model referable via the subtype aspect. Now all our object types are marked. Now we need to map many to many fact types. For each many-to-many -many fact type, A, R1, R2, B, create a table named A, R1, B. Then add two non-lexical mandatory columns to this table. One column with name A, R1 and one with B, R2. Then mark the combination of the two columns as candidate key. In this example, person can have many nicknames and a nickname can be held by many persons. So this is a many-to-many -many fact type. So we need to add a table called 
nickname of person and then add a column for nickname and for person then mark the two columns as candidate key in the fifth step we will make each group lexical so for each table a constructed for an object type a select one of the candidate keys as primary key and then for each table that is connected to a via a role replace each column based on this primary key by the primary key column composition of a and add a foreign key from these columns to the primary key in table a we take id number of as the primary key for person person is connected to id number by a role but id number doesn't have any columns based on this primary key person is also connected to car by a role and car contains column person of which was derived from person so we need to replace this column with the lexical primary key column of person the last step is to add a foreign key from this column to the primary key of person in the second example we make fin of the primary key for table car car is connected to person but person does not have any columns that were derived from car car is also connected to license registration and vin but both also don't have any columns derived from car car is the super type of coupé which has the column car subsuming which was derived from car so we replace the non-lexical column with the lexical vin of car subsuming equivalent and add a foreign key to vin of in the car table in the sixth step we eliminate unnecessary reference tables these are tables where the values in them don't have meaning on their own let's see this in our example first of all we have id number and this table doesn't have any columns therefore it's obsolete the same applies for license registration and for vin we also have coupé we cannot remove this table because it has meaning on its own it derives from car and the meaning of a coupé therefore would be lost the last step in our algorithm is to map any remaining constraints in our example we have one constraint that is not mapped yet the role subset constraint implies that when a car has a license registration it should always have a person that registered it but this is a constraint that a relational database schema does not support so we need a way to enforce this constraint we can solve this by defining the constraint in sql and ensuring that all queries on this table will comply with this statement this is the resulting relational database schema that was mapped via the seven-step algorithm